very excited to sit down with my friend, Megan Extra. Megan, so great to spend some time with you and hear about your career journey in insurance, in claims specifically. Can you tell people who you are and what you do? Yes. Um, likewise, I'm happy to be here. My name is Megan Ekstrom, and I am the VP of Claims at the Philadelphia Contribution Ship, which is actually um, the oldest successful insurance company in the United States. It's founded by Benjamin Franklin in 1752. That's that's your domain name, right? 1752.com? That's who we are. That's our brand. That's pretty cool. It's a long time ago. Um, <laughs> I've got some questions about career, and and that's how you and I initially met, was talking about careers and uh, insurance and claims careers. And so when I was thinking about who better to sit down with than someone who's had this great career and, you know, landed at the top of a claims org. And um, I, I kind of like to hear about your story. How did you get into things and what got you to that point where you're like, you know what, I want to shoot for the top and I'm going to make it happen. And you did. Yeah. All right. So I'll give you the cliff notes version, I guess. Yeah. Um, so I actually fell into insurance by mistake, like the rest of us, you know, yeah. no one dove in and said, Hey, that looks everyone crazy. whose parents weren't agents or adjusters. <laughs> like, yeah. Exactly. Uh, yeah. My, my father-in-law kind of suggested my, my first company because I, it was Amica and Amica had been the family insurance company for decades. And uh, it was my first job aside from being a mom, a stay-at-home mom. And, and I was excited to do something with my bachelor's degree in English. Uh, and definitely speak didn't. English in the job. So that works. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it serves me well. Um, so I, I started off at Amica being a, uh, a customer service rep. So I was, I was on the phone. I was taking FNOL calls, multi-line. I think, I think it was mostly auto maybe at the time. Um, but I was right on the front lines, you know, it was, it's probably arguably one of the hardest jobs in the company. Yeah. Uh, just taking all that information in and just trying to process it and get the claim in the right direction and set the stage for a really positive experience for the customer. Yeah. At their most um, difficult moment, like it's yeah. just when everything is hitting them and they're lost. For sure. And, you know, they want a friendly voice on the other end of that line. And, and Amiga always had that reputation and it was a duty to uphold. So yeah. it was, um, it was a, a, an awesome first kind of peak at the industry. Did you, did you have a sense early on that there's something here, there's more of a path or when did that develop for you? Yeah. I mean, I looked around, I, I was in that role for, it was less than a year when I started kind of seeing, oh, okay, there's a lot to, to do here. There's a lot going on. And, and so I remember there being a job posting for a multi-line adjuster and I saw the job posting and it, it said, must have one year of experience. And, and I kind of went home that night and I was talking to my husband and I was like, Oh, you know, it, it seems really interesting, but you know, you need one year of experience with the company. So I'm I'm not eligible yet. And yeah. and you have to move around the country. You have to kind of be willing to relocate. And and so he said, Well, you know, the kids are young. Let's let's give it a try and and stay open-minded, but go knock on someone's door and say, Hey, I know I'm not quite eligible yet, but you know, maybe, maybe this is something that they would consider. And uh, so I did, and and I had the conversation, and and it turned out that they were open minded um, to kind of consider someone that wasn't quite uh, at that one year point yet. So uh, I became a, a multi line adjuster at that point, and um, and from there it it just really became one challenge after the next, you know, um, and just kind of looking for ways that I could learn and and be better and kind of separate myself from my peers. I I was always sort of interested in how can I, you know, ach like achieve a degree or a certificate or something that kind of made me stand out? I felt a little bit like I had to do some catch up from having, you know, stayed home with my kids for a lot of years. And a lot of my peers were a little bit older than me. And I, I really wanted to kind of catch up and, and really show what I was made of yeah. and um, kind of became one challenge after the next just to keep going. Megan, I think that's a really key point for people is, you know, having, having managed folks in a claims organization you can see the difference of the ones who are like, you know, it's a great job. I'm good with this. I don't, I don't need to do anything else. And that's totally fine. Right. But every now and then you see someone who's like, what if, you know, what if I, I invested in myself? What if I pushed myself ahead and who might support me in that path? Right. Um, you know, like whether it's mentors or bosses or whatever, but it, it is a conscious choice and a, a decision to invest in yourself. And, and that's something I remember hearing from you like the first time that we talked about career was this desire to keep sort of pulling yourself forward. Right. right. What, what was the reception to that and, and the support or, or not support? I mean, how did you, how hard of a, a battle was that? 
Um, it changed along the way. I think that there is somewhat of an expectation of how far someone is going to go. And, mm. and sometimes I think that there's a tendency for um, us as humans to expect a certain amount from our you know, direct reports. And so a lot of time along the way, I'd get a lot of support saying, hey, I'm here to help you get to the next level. And I have my eye on something else for you. And you know, get out of your comfort zone, try this. And then I think that that manifested inside of me to, to, to kind of start that on my own. Yeah. And, you know, I remember at one point having a conversation like, hey, I bet I could lead a claims department. And, and that became my new reach. And, and at that point, it was kind of fell out of reach, right? And a couple of conversations I had, and maybe it wasn't as realistic to some people, like, yeah. you know, okay, but maybe not yet. Or sure, like, let's work on that. But I didn't get the feel of like, hey, go get that, Megan. Yeah. And that became my own internal drive to go get that thing. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I think that that was another way that I was able to set myself apart and just really kind of stand out and and go find those those goals that I was chasing. Um, I think that that's great. And that not not letting that dissuade you because there will always be supporters and there will always be naysayers. And it's a question of which ones you let into your mind and which ones even the naysayers could be fuel. If you choose right. to let them be that, they don't have to be water putting the flames out. Um, right. Is there anything as you look back on your career that you're like, if I did this differently, I would be in this spot or, um, you know, I wouldn't change anything because I wouldn't be where I am if I did. Or, you know, do, do you have any regrets or things you would do differently or things that you're maybe at the time you were unsure about? And you're like, I'm so glad that I pushed through that because look where things landed. Yeah, no, really good question. I tend to be someone who tries not to regret anything. You know, I feel like every every decision that we make is a puzzle piece of the big picture yeah. and good or bad, we can look back and be like, that's cringy, but like, okay, it was part of who I am. So let's just do this. Um, I just remember uh, a very highly technical position that I held um, in my career that kind of went against who I am as a, you know, as a person. And I just, I'm more personable. I really like, you know, people interaction and people leadership and things like that. And this position kind of led me down a, a very highly technical path. Yeah. And it was difficult in the moment to be on that path because it was just a little bit more removed from the people element of it. But when I do look back at that, it was essential. Um, you, you cannot be in a position of leadership over a claims department without having that highly technical exposure. And where I had been very regional um, geographically, that position allowed me a, a much broader view of the country and mm -hmm. different jurisdictions and um, statutory regulations and things like that, that, um, you know, made me uh, a lot more aware of some of the challenges that I needed to have as, as one of those puzzle pieces in my big picture to do what I'm doing today. So, um, you know, looking back, may, maybe hated every minute of it, but it uh, definitely is something that I am super grateful that I had. Yeah, I think we all have those moments where in the moment, you know, we're miserable with something, but I always say like, if you appreciate where you are or the things that you have, maybe not a hundred percent of all of it, but generally, right. then you have to allow for what you went through, good or bad, easy or hard. Absolutely. Uh, otherwise, you know, the dominoes may have fallen differently. For um, sure. Megan, I'm so thankful that you took some time to sit down with with me and hopefully everybody watching is a little bit more inspired to keep thinking about, you know, what could they achieve if they invested in themselves and why not achieve it in insurance or claims specifically? It's a good place to be. Absolutely. Thank you for, for sharing some thoughts.